Reverend Prido, the book in your hands is the book you have been seeking for such a long time. Thomas is over your shoulder, as is Miss Lambert. What do you do? Uh, feverishly, he, he flicks open the, the, the passage. Is, is this exactly the sort of thing he's been after all, all this time? He's sort of like, he, he starts to read. And seeing where you were previously uh, in, the, in the, 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 the pages torn from the book that you've seen, you look at this and you begin reading. 31st of January, in the year of our Lord, 1709. Birth of a God. With the marrow seemingly living forever, Although not invulnerable, they can only seem to add to their ranks by converting and evolving wayward humans into their own kind, or by having human males impregnate their females. A natural birth between marrows is seen as hideous, almost blasphemous. Therefore, by whatever ancient magics or unnatural communion took place, Mother Hydra laid an egg, which appeared to be fertilized yet slow in gestation. Jonathan, Elias, and myself saw an opportunity to return to the land above water and make it appear that we were still in the service of these ancient underwater dwellers. This unnatural birth became an immediate concern in the Vero culture. Father Dagon saw this egg as a challenge to his throne and worship, as far as we could understand the motives of these creatures. Therefore, he did what any king would do with a perceived threat. He sent murderous and loyal acolytes that appeared to be marrows, accompanied by horrific tentacle twisting writhing forms, like oil spilt in water with a thousand eyes refusing to dissipate. These murderous pairs were called the Marrow Twa Shogor. Father Dagon made it clear for all to hear that they were there to kill the gestating egg before it hatched. Before the Marrow Chua Shongo could find the egg and terminate it, Elias convinced Jonathan and I to play our part in the biggest gamble of our lives, to convince Mother Hydra to allow us to return to the surface world, along with the egg, to hide and to protect it until the time was right for it to hatch. Horrified, the Reverend slams the book shut and uh, actually turns to um, Miss, Miss Forrester. Who, who delivered th th this book? Uh, is Mr. Burroughs inside? Uh, no, sir. Um, um, Mr. Owens um, from the church, he came by um, earlier today. Uh, he, he said um, that unfortunately he had a, a guest with him that he couldn't get rid of and he wanted to make sure that you had what was yours and and that it was a matter of life and death. What a jolly good chap that Owens is. I, I, I say he's uh, really delivered, come through for us on, on this one. Good, 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 good. Uh, sh sh shall we, uh, children, um, Miss... Oh, uh, sorry, Reverend. Miss Lambert, I thought you were Miss Anastasia for one moment. You are, of course, uh, very welcome. Reverend. Uh, uh, yes. Miss Foster's uh, hand kind of reaches out to your forearm and kind of grips it. Um, just, just you know, enough to get your attention. She knows she's breaking social boundaries here, um, but she does so and just locks eyes with you and says, Mr. Owens, I've never seen anybody um, so determined as he was, sir. He said that if anything happened to him, that you'd look out for his wife and daughter. Very well. Very well. Uh, yes. He, he yes. told me and to say that to you, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Miss Foster. And uh, let me make the same promise to you, Miss Foster. We will look after you. You work here at Prado Manor. And I'm very glad you are here. And your service to Miss Anastasia, I, I say, unfortunately, is not joining us. If you would be so kind as to continue your service, feel just that a little bit more secure. Is she somewhere else, sir, that I can... I, I, I could accompany her? I, I do believe she's headed down to the health spa of all the places, but um, it, it, that'll be a trip for another uh, another time. Perhaps right. you, you might be so good as to uh, uh, put some hot water on. I do believe we'll need some uh, 
uh, bathing water and uh, uh, some brandy, if uh, that, that is available. Oh, very good, sir. Um, on, uh, thank, I'll have um, d- d- Harris, we'll, we'll get a fire going. Uh, of course. Very good, sir. Thank you, thank you. Uh, 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 shall we, uh, Miss Lambert, uh, Master Thomas? Uncle, we need to make a detour via the study. This talk of Mother, was it Mother Hydra, Father Dagon, Meros? I I've read about this. I, 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 I believe, believe we have it. It's very dark in, the, in this study. Let us just gather around the fire. Just get our wits. I believe this is quite an evening that we need to just... Well, we'll just talk about it. No, certainly I, I, I could, because... I mean, did you see the amount of bodies there were? I, I'm, I how, have never seen anything like it. I don't think I'll ever forget it. How can I forget the amount of bodies, Uncle? Yeah, go, 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 come on, come on, let, 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 let us get inside it, and we'll head in, and, um, yes. And Harris is standing at the door, um, Welcome back, uh, um, Lord Prido, uh, Reverend Prido, Miss Lambert, um, uh, the rooms have been prepared, and uh, the, the servants are up there now, running, mouths, uh, uh, um, is there anything else I can do for you to make you comfortable b- b- no, before you sleep? D- just need to check nobody else has broken into Prido Manor whilst we've been away, Harris. You know what it's like around here. Absolutely not, sir. Absolutely not. Uh, if anybody <laughs> has broken in, sir, I will make sure I see to them myself. Jolly good, Harris. Jolly good. Um, yes, if you could let us know, uh, how long will the baths uh, take to get warm? About uh, 20 minutes, something like um, that? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. We started them as soon as we saw the carriage arriving, just in case uh, you required um, such refreshment. Uh, Very good. I, I'm minutes. terribly sorry. It's 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 a little early to be having a bath, I know, but it's a bit of an occasion, so we shall uh, uh, take some uh, Tom, Thomas brandy. Miss Lambert? Brandy. Miss Lambert, could I, uh, I offer you a drink? I would never normally touch brandy, but I think tonight I need one. <laughs> I feel the same. A brandy in the study, please, uh, Harris. Yes, very good. To the study. And uh, he'll walk you to the study, and then um, he'll arrive a moment or two later uh, with a, uh, a series of brandies, um, different things. You you know in the study anyway that there's a number of drinks within the drinks cabinet, but you can see that he's brought out a rather special... Um, yeah. Would anybody... I'm going to ask if anybody would like to make a psychology roll. I'll give it a go. Oh, Why not? Boy. Mm. <laughs> now, that's an 80 over 10. This is a failure. Ah. Everything's fine, Thomas. That's also a failure. 68 against 20. Charlotte is uh, a little bit out of it at this point, I think. Again, everything is fine, Charlotte. <laughs> <sighs> the Reverend isn't much uh, better. He is 89 versus 46. So, yes, everything is fine. Fine, I, absolutely, oh, absolutely perfect. Nothing to worry about. Everything is fine. Nobody is nervous for any other reason. Please drink your brandy. Carry on your your, your conversation. It's been a long night. Thomas will head to the bookcase where he deposited the copy of Waves of Madness by Stuart H. Bruce. Uh, can I find Waves of Madness on the shelf? You can. Excellent. I will bring it over to the Reverend Prideau. Uncle, I think we should look at this book as well. I feel yes. there is definitely a crossover. Have you have you seen this one? Yes, yes. I I, I think I've uh, been been through the library. Uh, Miss Lombard tells a very troubling story of uh, let's just say a um, <laughs> a mother goose coming back to collect her eggs and not being happy with the people that stole them. A situation where I may be facing in. Uh, very, very shortly. But before that, uh, your very good health to the people uh, that are gathered here and to absent friends, and he'll clink the glasses and uh, say to uh, Charlotte, Miss Lambert, you really are looking rather, rather well that, that stay in Dun Manor has done you the world of good. Well, I have to ask, Reverend Thomas, did you know, did you know that I'm a Dun? I promise you, I had no idea. How, how has this uh, this come about? Uh, Lady Dunn uh, whispered something to me uh, about it, but uh, I thought it was just a bit of a bit of a ruse. How could you possibly be 
be beard. Not that I wish to d d dissuade you. It's, I, I, forgive me, Charlotte. It has been quite an evening. It, well, for quite some time, I, 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 I felt as though I'm not really one of you, and, and now I know why. Emily told me tonight, uh, apparently my grandmother, she was married before, and she was married to a Don. Don? I, I, I don't um, quite un un understand. That would be quite some time ago. Neither do I. That's why I'm asking you both. Whether you knew, and, and if you did know, when? No. I, I, I mean, how, how did you come to this in, in, information? Is it, did you read it in Emily. the family tree or something? No. No, Emily Dunn. She told me tonight. It, it was though they were waiting for me to be there. Waiting? Goodness me. But but you're uh, well in your, your yourself. You, uh, you you fainted at the uh, well on on the beach and uh, yes, yes. They they took very good care of me. But these this book, this book, and that that says about the egg. I've seen it. I've been there. It's uh, on the uh, ship. Uh, the, the ship I keep dreaming about, the, a, a, a giant red egg. Uh, I heard a voice. I was on the deck of the ship and I heard a voice from the captain's cabin and it said, Mother. And it was calling out and, and it was there. I saw it and I, I touched it. No, 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 a no, no. A no, giant no, I, red egg. I, 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 I too have seen this. Uh, are you sure it was on the ship? It wasn't pumping into the water like, like, like a heartbeat or something like that. You mean the red yeah. Yeah. egg made of red jelly with the, uh, the creature inside in Jenkins's lair, in the center of Jenkins's lair, with the these I'm gonna call them marrows, these fish things in tanks either side. Well, it would appear it is on the ship now, uh, according to uh, Miss Lambert. I'm, I'm sorry, well, is it, it Miss Lambert dream. or Miss, Miss Dunn? Which would you prefer? <laughs> I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. How about you call me George and I'll call you Charlotte, just like back at the house. I would like that. It's good to have you home, Charlotte. I have missed you. Thank you, George. Now, this, this lair, Thomas, well, we had this very strange situation uh, occur. We went to the... Well, uh, uh, Charlotte, after you fainted, we were somewhat uh, abruptly escorted to this health spa and as we were in there well something untoward happened and we we, we saw one of the, these uh, poor creatures that had been savagely brutalized by i can only assume done thomas the, these creatures are as much of a victim as we are here they are being used for machinations and he l looks around a little bit sheepishly think they are playing with biblical forces beyond their imagination. What if these creatures are part of the end of days, brought about too soon by these fools who don't know what they're meddling with? There is much, much life left in the world. We are not ready for the end of days yet, but they meddle with these creatures foretold in the Bible. These frogmen, they come out of the river and the, the mist is sweeping across. They need to be stopped. What they are doing before they bring about a wrath. Uncle and Charlotte, these tales you both tell of, of religion and of fairies, this is not what we are dealing with. We are dealing with facts here. Yes, these people are manipulating these creatures, but these are abominations themselves. When I was in Jenkins's lair, there was one on a table. There were notes. I... And Thomas stops and thinks he, I think he put some of the papers into his jacket that he was wearing. He might have some notes. He completely forgot about these because of his ordeal. And he quickly rings the bell for Harris. You hear the footsteps tottering down the hall and then there's a knock at the door. Enter. Um, you rang, sir. Harris, uh, to my room. Uh, can you get the tailcoat I was wearing when I returned from the lake? Um, you can bring it straight here, please. Um, it has been cleaned, sir. And the contents of the pockets? Uh, in your room, sir. In that case, if you can fetch those for me, please. Very good, sir. 
and uh, Harris trots back off. Thomas, you have to understand these are creatures of God's green earth. They are to be cared for as we would uh, th those things that swim in swim in the sea, not the uh, dull, dull. Uh, th th those things that aren't fish. Um, oh gosh, my son would tell, tell me ma mammals, mammals. Yes, the dol dolphins. They are victims of man's machinations. These people that, well, I, f I fear he would be king. And, and that is what this is building to. There's some crazy sort of ritual that they, they, they want to build up to. I feel that what we are dealing with here, yes, they are forces, supernatural nature, but only supernatural in that we don't understand their function and purpose at the moment. Behind every miracle, there is a perfectly good scientific explanation, I'm sure. That is the marvel of God. He is able to explain himself in such clear ways that everyone can understand. It is this nature that we must help and understand and, and prevent. I don't quite know how. This, this is why... You know, J Jenkins, you say Jenkins is behind all of this. I can't believe Jenkins can do all, all of these things. I mean, he, he he kidnapped you and Lord Hawthorne let him uh, escape. Certainly he is part of the mix, but unless we know somebody just as dangerous as Mr. Jenkins, I very much doubt that we're going to be able to find out the machinations of what is going on, but we will piece it together. And that does raise another good question, Uncle. Is Hawthorne and, and Dunn, where did they figure into this? You must remember, I've not had a chance to talk to them as you have. I what have exactly been. is going... Anastasia said that they were trying to kill her. I, I don't believe uh, Tobias would have let her go uh, as easily uh, as he did if he feared for her life, but... Can only Tobias? Trust Lady Haw D Tobias Hawthorne. Uh, Tobias Hawthorne. That, that gentleman on the dance floor was a Hawthorne. You were letting her dance with a Hawthorne. He's a very good chap, Thomas. Please don't jump to any conclusions. But, but no. if, if the Hawthorns are trying to kill her, surely they would send in a... What was it that Cosgrove called it? A Judas goat. I'm sorry, is that a gambling term? I'm not aware of uh, there being any Judas goats in oh, the Bible. Oh, uncle, I don't think he owned uncle, one. uncle, you know the tale of the scapegoat. This is what he is. Oh. I, Wait, you, who, you've lost me. Who, wants, who wants to kill Anastasia and why? Why would anybody want to kill Anastasia? These were her own words. What she told have I me, missed? She told me that Hawthorne wanted her dead. Maybe I just believe, Lord Hawthorne. Surely not. I, I believe uh, Tobias is looking out for her and I have to believe Lady Hawthorne when she says that she's safe. She is a prido, and to uh, be so blatant would risk alienating us at this vital time for whatever part we are yet to play in this strange, strange. But, 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 but take me back to this, this egg, this, this creature, this. You, you say you had a vision on a ship, Miss Lambert. Uh, Charlotte. Yes, <laughs> yes. While I was in Dun Manor, I, I had a vision of the Devonshire. I've been dreaming about it for some time now, and so has Anastasia. As I said, I, 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 that was where I first had the notion that perhaps I was a dun. It was Emily who told me the, the truth of it, but I was in the cabin, and I saw the egg. And wait, at the church, that hmm. uh, that stained glass window, it's it's the shape of an egg. It's red. I remember thinking how odd it was at the time that, that the land, if, if it was a map, I, I remember thinking how odd it was that it wasn't coloured green, it, but it was red. By George, this you're right. This whole town is the egg. And we have a week. That's what Hawthorne said in seven days. That God is born. We, we, we need, we need to, uh, well, we need to go back, back, back to the church and... Uh, it was at the church where I do believe the, um, well, I don't wish to sound uh, out of turn, but uh, it sounds quite natural now that, well, I believe the egg spoke to me. I don't know whether it has spoken to any of you. I think it wants help. I think we need to do something to get it get it away from certainly uh, Hawthorns. 
plans and what he intends for the for this town. But what would we do with it, even if we could rescue it? We return it to the sea. Or Surely, we ask mother you, to come and collect. You've read Waves of Madness. The mother and the father came to destroy the land. But if we remove this egg from the land, hopefully, just a chance, they may not come for the land. They may be satisfied. Yes, I think you're right. The Reverend pauses and doesn't respond, but he is sadly thinking about whether or not this l this land can be saved. Mm. He is wondering how rotten to the core it could be, but he has to try and remember the innocent people in here, but after seeing such carnage in done manner and the complicit nature of the servants and the willingness of these people here to serve this ruling family and the fate that happened to Lord Prideau. How much is there left of this town to save? Thomas, are you leafing through Waves of Madness as you have this conversation? I think Thomas is. Thomas is flicking through. There are pictures, looking at pictures, seeing whether there's anything that... Uh... Uh, Can you give me a mind. luck roll, please? Uh, luck? Oh, very well. That is a 22 under 28. That is a regular Ooh. success. Then in someone's book, you are lucky. In another person's book, well, we shall we shall see. But as you're flicking through the pages and you're, you're rereading that section on what happened to uh, Cantroguelo, what happened um, to the land beyond Wales that once was there, you almost realise there's some kind of bookmark in Waves of Madness. And as you turn the page, you see it. And you realise it's a tarot card. My God, your God, <laughs> Uncle. It's only an egg. It's a bloody red egg. On a... No need to swear, Thomas. No, it's a egg the colour of blood, Uncle. Blood red egg, Uncle. And he pulls the card out and whips it out to show... As Carlos. you're doing That's that, you, you all hear a consistent knock at the door, which is getting more tired as it goes on. Uh, enter, enter. Uh, thank you. So, <laughs> sorry, I ran up the stairs, you see. Um, these were the notes, sir, uh, from um, your, your jacket. Harris walks into the room and he has this collection of um, d d diagrams uh, images, uh, but you can see that there is a written note amongst these. The, the, bizarrely, the diagrams are, you can see there's almost um, autopsies of, of, of fish. There is uh, mythical depictions of fish-like humans. Uh, there is a series of images of uh, the, the human brain that is that has been annotated and labelled. Um, and there are some rather disturbing images of creatures that it's hard to explain what species they remain in, yet they seem to have been surgically explored, shall we say. But there is a written document that accompanies these. Thomas, would you mind reading it for us? The Merrows, Deep Ones, are an inferior race who act like worker bees or soldier ants. Their own personal autonomy has yet to be seen. The purser will not be obedient to others' wills and declares that we shall be the next iteration of these creatures. We will have all of the strengths and none of their weakness. This is what it means to be a shallow one. This is, this is it. This is what they mean to do to us. This is what they're trying to do with these, these, these marrows. But who or what is the purser? Uh, th that uh, isn't that an, a naval a position on a ship? So is, isn't that uh, Hawthorne saying he's taking a stand? Was, wasn't he the person? I, I do, do believe. I thought I had Anastasia say something at the game or uh, something. But uh, this is it very does interesting. sound familiar. Yes. Mm. Uh, uh, Charlotte, Charlotte, are you well enough to to, to be viewing the, the, these things? I, I don't don't wish wish to be insulted, but you have had um shall we say hallucinations 
Uh, are, you, are you cured of, the, of these? I don't wish to impede you any further. I really thought we were past all this, George. It's been a quite an evening for me. If there's anything we need to know to protect each other, now is the time. I've confessed I've, I've seen things and heard things that uh, people may see I was mad and... I just want you to be all right with what we're doing and what we may have to do. And if there's anything that can help us, dreams, contacts, people, then we need to examine all avenues. I am not a mad woman. And I'm just as able to deal with this as you are and as Thomas is. The only thing I could need right now is a shawl. She is shivering, I think, uh, wearing only an evening gown that's probably quite low-necked and short-sleeved and uh, she's probably a bit in shock as well I would imagine. Thomas removes but, his slightly blood-stained jacket and passes it around Charlotte's shoulders. Thank what you. Thank you Thomas, you're, you're very kind. Um, I apologise uh, Charlotte, I didn't mean to upset you. I'm going to uh, finish my brandy and uh, head upstairs It's it's been quite an evening, I'm going to uh, yes, go to my room and do some praying for us all, if you'll excuse me. And he'll knock his uh, brandy back and then uh, head out and leave these two to it. He's going to head upstairs. Is he taking the the book with him? The journal of Lieutenant Lord Matthew Prido? Um, in his absent-mindedness and not wanting to uh, uh, stay very, very much longer, he'll probably leave it, leave it there. He's... Uh, Made a bit of a faux pas with Charlotte and he wants to retreat. As you're going upstairs to your room, um, can you give me an intelligence roll? Mm. That is a hard success. 29 versus 80. It's just when you go up to your room, Reverend, you take a few steps up and the, the, the weight of the evening is beginning to, well, make itself evident upon you mentally, there it is. physically. It's been, well... To put it in generous terms, horrific. You've seen an entire ballroom of people dead. You've seen these supposed rulers and protectors of the town oppress and put upon their will to these individuals who have apparently willingly gone with their plans. And yet all of these inhuman factors remain about dreams and monsters and rituals and knives and th th they all seem to be washing around your your mind but it's as you're walking to your room your room there is the king's room queen's room captain's room purser's room surgeon's room the lieutenant's room and when you think for a moment with your success there with your well hard success yeah You've read about this, but specifically assigning those roles now. The lieutenant's room, the surgeon's room, the purser's room. You know, you know who they are. You know who these rooms have been named after. And it is not an accident, Reverend. Neil, stop for a moment when upon realising who the players are. Let's take a look into the lieutenant's room. Probably nothing, but he wants to just take a look around and see what, if anything, springs out to him on this horrific night. Can you give me a spot hidden, please? That is a failure. 57 versus 43. You look around the room. The bed is made. The room is in a pristine condition. Yet, there's nothing that stands out. I mean, it's at the front of the house, some beautiful wide windows. You can't help but see through the windows that red mist curls through the streets of the town beneath you. He's going to draw these curtains in a bit of, bit of a fury. He remembers what Hawthorne said about looking, and he wants to look. He's going to... Not turn the room upside down, but he's going to get down. He feels something and he wants to uh, look very much harder at this room, whether he has to uh, pull things down or 
just he wants to give this room a good going over and maybe push that spot hidden roll. Oh, okay. Let's have a pushed roll then, please. That is a failure of 44 versus 43. Oh, oh. <laughs> so close. Oh, oh. painful. In Unfortunate. This fury. So we didn't decide on the parameters of the push roll. I'm going to say that you're getting in closed spaces you're getting in uh, unrefined areas you're exploring this room to the nth degree reverend to you when you're exploring this room what is it that fumbles what is it that goes wrong you've pulled the curtains you've gotten down on the floor you've gotten under the bed you've got in the wardrobe you've got in the, the the private bathroom what is it for you that goes wrong he uncharacteristically gets very, very frustrated and he is pulling and pulling and pulling at something that isn't giving way. And when it gives way, something happens. It's around the bed, the four poster bed. You're trying to pull back some of the drapes that seem to be hanging there. And as you're looking, they keep washing over your head in this, in this annoyance that it's, you're batting it away. And the third time you bat it away, it just gets to a point where tonight has been so frustrating, so frustrating that you haven't been able to pull yourself together and act like the leader that you know you are, the leader of your flock. But for some reason with this family, you can't lead them. And as you push away this drape, as you pull away this drape, you pull the bloody thing down and the drapes around the entire bed pull down. And you see, Reverend, on the wall behind the bed, that very familiar symbol. The one that's on your right hand is painted on the wall, hidden behind the drape, in blood. And it is old, and it is dried, and it is brown, and it is crusted. Someone, many moons ago, drew this symbol above this bed because they wanted it to be there. Not be seen, but they wanted it to be there. Speaking of those who want to be seen but also don't want to be there... Lord Cosgrove, you are mm. walking with Lady Hawthorne, Lord Hawthorne, Lord Dunn, Lady Dunn, and you're having a merry walk down a coastal path, making your way down to, well, the beach of all places. The wind is blowing, the tide is rolling in. You have an opportunity to talk, Lord Cosgrove, with whomever you like. Uh, Lady Hawthorne, likewise. I say, Lord Cosgrove, how are you finding Kingscombe? I hope that uh, the atmosphere is uh, stimulating enough for you. Uh, yes. If anything, it may even be a trifle too stimulating. Oh, yes, we do tend to find that with, with newcomers. Um, but I'm sure you'll grow accustomed to it after a few days. I, I can't recommend the spa waters enough. And, of course, bracing sea air, wonderful walk on the beach in the moonlight. Most restorative, I think you'll find. Yes, I, I can feel myself becoming more restored by the moment. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> you hear uh, Hawthorne call out from the front of the party, uh, Cosgrove, Cosgrove, look down there. You see down there on the beach? And yes. You can, Cosgrove. You can see, uh, well, the beach extending as it does across the docks, but you can see that there is a ship. There is a, uh, well, a ruin, a wreck of a ship on the beach. Uh, the yes, is this um, some sort of local landmark? <laughs> you might say so. As of tonight, yes, it will be a local landmark. But once upon a time, Cosgrove, that ship there, the HMS Devonshire, that sailed a hundred or so years ago. From here, joined in a battle, fighting the, uh, well, the French at the time were considered rogues, commanding the seas they shouldn't be commanding, an active war. And I tell you, Cosgrove, that ship, that ship there, well, it did more than its duty. But there came a day when it sank. And it sank at the hands of a ship called the Lys. Buggers. A lot of them, those French, eh? Absolute buggers. Cannons, eyes a mark. Can't fault them for that. But I tell you what, Cosgrove, that day, over a hundred years ago, that day, 
the reason you're standing here, right now, looking out over this bay, looking at that ship. I, I do appreciate that it has been something of a, a trying evening, but I, I'm afraid I'm not quite following. <laughs> Cosgrove, when I mentioned there'd be benefits to being friends with us, well, one of the many benefits to being friends with us, the right kind of people, the right kind of society, is you get to see your former mistakes. You get to live through them. You get to live beyond them. <laughs> Cosgrove, how old yes. do you think I am? I... I wouldn't hazard a guess. It would be uh, frightfully impolite. <laughs> a man of manners. Let me put you out of your misery, Carlsgrove. I am 136 years old. Surprises you, doesn't it? I think after the evening that we've all shared, very little at this stage could surprise me. Well, let me surprise you a little further, Cosgrove. Dunn, and he points over his shoulder at Lord Dunn, myself, and uh, unfortunately you weren't here to uh, meet our third companion, our disciple, second lieutenant Matthew Prudo. The three of us, we sailed on that ship, and on that ship, Cosgrove, we sank, and we saw, and we experienced, and we lived. And Cosgrove, <laughs> we saw something that no man is supposed to see. But if you behave yourself, and if you welcome us in the way that we have welcomed you, this control over life, this control over one's reality, could be something that you are allowed to manipulate, play with, toy with. Does that wet your beat, Cosgrove? I would be lying if I said I were not intrigued. And I like it when you tell the truth, Cosgrove. Very much like it when you tell the truth. Right. Best foot forward, everybody. Let's get down to the old girl, shall we? The HMS Devonshire and see what secrets she has in store for us. And you begin marching down this um, coastal path, which is, is quite winding and there's a few rocks. And it's difficult because it's still very late at night. But you find yourself navigating your way down. The stars are bright. The moon is bright. There is an illumination. But Lord Cosgrove, you and Lady Hawthorne, you both have an opportunity to talk to uh, each other or anybody else within the party that you'd like to during this trek towards the HMS Devonshire. Lady Hawthorne, please do not think me forward in asking this, but what, what your husband has just said there, is this... A revelation to you? Is this the kind of thing he says often? You have to understand that um, Lord Hawthorne is a very determined man. Um, he likes to, to get his own way. Um, he likes to be in control. So yes, um, this is very typical of his pronouncements. Um, and I have been privileged to be privy to his um, plans for quite some time now. As a devoted wife um, should be, you know, there to support her, her, hus her husband in his endeavours, as society would expect. And what would you be doing if you were free of the shackles of society's expectations? Oh, given what he's achieved within those shackles, um, well, to borrow a, um, a slightly um, oceanic-themed um, homily, um, I would say that the world was quite probably his oyster. 
I, I'm sorry, uh, Lady Hawthorne. You misunderstand me. I wasn't asking your husband. I was asking about you. Oh, um... Oh, well, I mean, um... I, I hadn't really considered that, obviously. Um, I'm sure you have. We all have. Well, as a uh, dutiful wife, um, um, my husband's position in society obviously reflects greatly on, on myself. Um, but you are not simply an adornment to your husband, are you? I would like to think that I'm more than that to him, but um, but Elias has always been a man who very much knows his m own mind and is is determined and um, forthright in all things, shall we say. Um, I have always found it best to support him um, and, if required, steer him gently, but but believe let him believe it is his own. Um, doing but but in this matter it is it is most certainly his his own thoughts that steer it um i merely i'm i merely hope for the best for my my children and the town um and my my own safety and preservation yes i i did rather wonder if we can continue the nautical theme whose hand was upon the rudder you, as I believe a great many wives of great men um, have, have done over the years, you do seem to, uh, as you said, direct your husband. In household matters, yes. <laughs> um, in terms of this endeavour uh, that he, um, Matthew and Jonathan, undertook all those years ago, um, he is most definitely to the forefront. Um, of course. But in dutiful wife, I expect to be rewarded um, for my service, and that my children and his children by his first wife will, will also be protected and rewarded. I understand. You begin to make your way down onto the, the beach now. Um, the wind seems less washed on the beach. Uh, now that you've come down the side of the, the cliff from, from Dun Manor, and you can see as you march in this rather militant line, even though you know, there are ladies uh, amongst the company, it seems like Hawthorne is driving quite a significant march towards this location across the beachfront. Lord Cosgrove, could you give me a spot hidden, please? Uh, yes, that's a hard success. Then you can see, without doubt that you are on the edge of the red mist as you walk across the beach, but you can see that it is significant amongst the town. It is spread, weaving between the streets and the alleys, but you walk through it. You breathe it in, you breathe it out. It's no different to any other mist. It's just this unique colour. But as you walk along the beachhead towards the HMS Devonshire, you can see in the distance now with your hard success that there are a number of very still silhouettes almost circling the HMS Devonshire. On the beach itself? On the beach itself, almost circling the shipwreck. There's a number of silhouetted figures within the red mist around the HMS Devonshire. I say, Hawthorne, are, are we expecting to uh, meet friends here? <laughs> it's not about meeting friends. It's about, well, engaging those that uh, work with us, for us, you might say. Listen, there are creatures up there, Cosgrove. You will have seen them tonight. They are, well, how shall I describe them? Filthy degenerates. They are duns, creatures. Dun! Dun! You're filthy creatures. Oh, uh, yes, um, they're the, um, Lord Cosgrove, uh, 
creatures from the sea, long, deep, long hidden, uh, of the, the the culture, the, the of the the, the egg. Um, but I have um, adapted them to respond to the egg, and, and therefore respond to uh, us under our control. Hawthorne jumps in. Yes, filthy blighters. Disgusting little things. They are, well, should we say they are followers and not leaders, Cullsgrave? They do what they're told. So, they, they pose no danger then? Not to me. Indeed. Indeed. We return to Prido Manor, where the Reverend Thomas, uh, Miss Lambert, have uncovered a number of secrets the reverend has removed himself uh, to get some sleep after such a horrific event thomas charlotte you're still having a brandy by the fire you have a moment together for the first time since arriving in kingscombe thomas has got a chance to stop and take stock of what's going on now he's out of the influence of the red jelly. And I think suddenly the, all the emotions, all of the, the heartache, all of the pangs, all of the, 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 the withdrawal, all of the, the, the devastation and the death that has occurred over the past 24, 48 hours is just going to hit him. And he's going to shudder. Brandy spilling from the glass and look up to Charlotte tears just starting to glisten in his eyes please help me find my sister this is this is too much we will you 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 you've always been her friend you've always been there for her i i i admit i haven't i know i haven't but the fact that she's actually gone this is we need to Fine, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, he turns away, wiping a tear from his eye to face the fire. This is unseemly of me. I, I do apologise. Please don't apologise. And uh, Charlotte will gently take the glass from his hand where he's spilled it and refills it and gives it back to him. We will find her. Do you think... Do you think if we find this egg, if we can get it and, and if we can give it back to them they'd let her go if they truly have her that that is a hope at this stage i i don't know are we playing into the hands by giving the egg back to the sea is that what they want so many I things i don't know but i don't know if it gets anastasia back she was right she was so right about so many things and i just didn't listen she always has been yeah you're you're right it's not too late, Thomas. She does care for you a great deal. Are you sure? I, f I feel we've been growing more and more distant since since father disappeared. Your whole family cares for you. Try saying that to my uncle. Look at the way he treats me. Like a child. Like a petulant child. He is, he is a good man, I believe. But just perhaps sometimes a little confused. I think he finds it harder than most of us to accept what's been going on here. Yes, Uncle, he, he means well, but he's, his head is full of God and religion. He, he's contextualising what we're seeing, this unnatural, unexplic unexplainable, inexplicable thing to fit within his narrow view of good and evil. This is not good and evil. This is more than that and it scares me there was a, a time i was genuinely afraid he was going to have me push away that he thought i was a mad woman we all we all thought that when you married the frenchman but but <laughs> do you know what i have to admit you seemed happy with him and sometimes i was i would give my right arm for a little bit of that happiness that you had with monsieur lambert as you say, I would give myself, I would give everything. Let me say what? that again. 
I was only giving my right arm. Not, not the rest. Say, yeah, that was it. As you give say myself you... to the Frenchman. As you say, you give your <laughs> he right arm. probably wouldn't say no, to be honest. Oh, we. <laughs> Is that what you said, your right arm? I'll give my right arm, yes. Okay, cool. As you say, you give your right arm for a little bit of happiness, you hear a knock at the door, but it's not the same knock you're used to hearing from Harris. It's... Three short, sharp knocks, and then an envelope, which is slid under the door. Thomas walks to the door and opens it. The corridor is empty. No one to be seen. Dark. It's very late at night. Thomas shudders. The last time... He opened a door to no one there, and an envelope pushed under. Was it Shipley Manor? And Mr Jenkins had delivered a letter to his sister. And hand-shaking, brow-sweating, he brings the envelope over to Charlotte. Open it. I can't. Please. All right. And she does so. You recognise the writing, Charlotte, as do you, Thomas, even though you try to deny it. And it is the writing of Mr Stephen Jenkins. Oh, no. Damn you, Jenkins. <laughs> it does say on the envelope, Miss Prido. Would you still like to open it and read it? I think we have to, don't we? We can't just leave that there. I know it's addressed to Anastasia, but let's be honest, it's probably not the first time that we've uh, read her mail. <laughs> well, I will add that there is a, a, a slight weight to the envelope. It's rather than just a, 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 a perhaps... Uh, a, a missive it's there's something significant in the envelope as well that you can feel as you lift it up but charlotte are you the one to open it i think so well as you open it uh, the envelope uh, almost drops to the floor uh, and the letter just kind of unfolds in your hand and you hear that oh so familiar voice to my intended you are beginning to see the truth in the world that i live in and soon the world that you will live in too. My master would use me simply as a tool, but I have so much more to offer. And when I marry into one of the chosen families, one of the disciples, I will, with you by my side, finally reach the top of this ridiculous social pyramid, proving myself to Lord Hawthorne it requires me to act beyond the normal conventions, but with a little help from someone who can see what may come and how it should be used to our favour. Therefore, I give you another gift. This is a token of what will happen. I enjoy watching you work out what this means but may I say my beloved I am yours and you are mine your devoted fiance Mr. Stephen Jenkins Charlotte Thomas after reading this um, letter over each other's shoulder, you look to the envelope on the floor and you can't help but see that having rolled out of the envelope is a finger with a ring on it. Thank you for joining us for Cult and Culpability. Remember, you can find us at www.miskatonicplayhouse.com and you can also visit the main stage for other scenarios from the Miskatonic Playhouse with links in the show notes below. Please like and subscribe and if you can spare a minute to leave a review, it makes a huge difference to other like-minded listeners who will be able to find and enjoy our work. Until next time, when the curtain rises again.